let's dive right in and um, let's take a look at scanning for stocks hello to everyone hello uh, bow in hello jan mark perry randall rodrigo ruben steve scott vito yb and uh, someone with multiple dashes and underscores hello stranger <laughs> not sure how to pronounce the underscores nonetheless welcome it's Friday. It's that time of week where we take a look at uh, swing trading stocks. We're going to look at scanning for stocks um, and how it can be really simple more than anything. All right, so with that said, if you are new to these sessions, uh, the way that uh, we do things is we're going to spend about uh, 60 minutes uh, taking a look at the charts, the markets, uh, the narrative that I'll be looking at things this week is going to be scanning stocks. That's what we're mainly going to be focusing on. Um, if you want to know about entries, exits, stops, and targets, take a look at last week's um, replay or the week before. Uh, we, we talk about a variety of different subjects. And again, we just have an area of focus uh, most weeks. Uh, nonetheless, we're going to uh, spend uh, two minutes for the new people, just so if it is your first time, you know, who is this guy, uh, the other side of the uh, speakers with the weird accents, you know, who is he? We'll spend two minutes doing that, and then we'll get straight into the charts. Uh, the best way to get uh, the most out of these types of sessions is be interactive, comment, like, share, ask questions. Uh, if you're watching the replay, pop it in the comments and share it with someone who needs to hear what we're talking about. As always, if you've got questions, uh, pop them in the chat box. I'll have the, uh, I've got the chat box on my other monitor. So if I see a question that's relevant at the moment, I'll answer it straight away. So don't wait till the end and um, ultimately. Got a little message from Zoom. Am I sharing the right screen? Is the uh, Are you seeing these slides for the moment? Just give me a little uh, yes or a no in the chat box. <clears throat> perfect, perfect. So, okay, cool. Right then, so who, who am I? Uh, I'm just a regular guy. Um, I say this every week. It's true. Uh, I've not worked in the industry. I'm not a Wall Street guru. Um, I've not got the um, inside banking secrets to that are only given to Wall Street insiders. Um, there's no such thing, it's all bullshit. Um, I am someone who's figured a few things out um, and I've made it work essentially for me. I uh, want it for me first and foremost. I am a trader first. I love helping other traders as much as I can. I try and give back to these free sessions every Friday. And obviously you can work a little bit more closely with me. <clears throat> if you want to speed up your own learning curve. I've been doing this for 30, 28 years now. Um, I've been full-time since 2001, and uh, it, it can be done. It can be done. So just again, kind of bumbling around my words this week again. No change there. Uh, but nonetheless, I've been doing this a while, as so I'm trying to illustrate. Um, I don't like thumping my chest for anyone who knows me, but at a certain a certain amount of trying to explain who I am and the fact that I've not, you know, it's not my first rodeo as the, uh, the kids like to say, you know, I generally try and help people get some measure of success. And um, I'd rather uh, my students, uh, you know, tell you in their own words and by their actions that they're getting results. That's more important uh, to me these days. Again, I know what I'm doing. I'm happy with uh, my own performance and my own success. Um, but I refer to what I do as production line trading um, for a reason. Firstly, I want it for myself. I want a systematic approach to find, filter, and sort stocks. I want a rule-based system that takes the discretion out. And what that means for you is that it should be replicatable. And that's the whole purpose of uh, you know following someone, finding uh, a, me a mentor, a guide. Um, I hear so many nightmare stories from other people who have tried other mentors or the gurus. And it's not that they're bad mentors or that, that they're bad uh, educators or teachers. It's just that often their process is discretionary and it's completely unique to them. And it's often not replicatable. So I want a repeatable rule-based system that's profitable. It takes me 30 minutes a day, a few times a week. Uh, that's a dial that you can speed up or slow down. So if you're a little bit more busy, you can slow things down. If you're a little bit more active or you want to be more active, then you can turn the dial and speed things up. You can go right up to day trading with the exact same system that I use. I prefer to swing trade. 
uh, these days. I want to spend two or three times a week. I want to go and enjoy myself. Uh, yesterday, for example, I went hiking. Um, I don't need to be at the markets, even though there's crazy shit going on at the moment. I don't need to be in front of the computer all day, every day. I'll explain how that works. You know, that's going to be part of the focus with the how do we scan for stocks, but that's what I want to do. Now, if I do want to be a little bit more active, a little bit more um you know, uh, frequent with my trading opportunities, then I can turn the dial the other way and speed things up and go all the way down to a two minute chart and use the same process to find day trade opportunities. I spent 12 years day trading. So again, I've done, you know, everything in between. Uh, again, I, I personally want my feet up, pipe smoking, uh, reading the newspaper attitudes. I like a slow pace of life these days. Uh, what I don't want to do is to be sat in front of the charts, uh, zombie trading, you know, flicking through chart after chart for hour after hour after hour, wondering if the next one's the one. So I'm going to show you how to avoid uh, all of this today. The secret ingredient with this is um, how to scan. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So no more zombie trading, no more wondering what to trade. Uh, we're just going to plug into uh, the exact stocks at the exact moments that make the most sense for my preferred style of trading. Uh, if you do want to uh, have a look at the laundry list of accolades, I have run my own hedge fund. Um, I've personally coached, mentored thousands of people uh, all around the world, banks, hedge funds, institutions. Um, Again, I've been on a, a few podcast interviews, media, et cetera, et cetera. If you're watching this on the recording, feel free to press pause. You can read through it at your leisure. And obviously with the live show where we want to get straight into the charts. And nonetheless, as I mentioned a moment ago, I try and give as much away as free as possible in these open house sessions. Uh, but if you would like to work more closely with me and speed up your own learning curve, I never had anyone to ask me when I... Uh, to be fair, mentor me. Unfortunately, I did it the hard way. I really did it the hard way. It took me more years to get to the full-time status, even though I was part-time trading for several years in the 90s. I'd known to ask. Um, I am the type of person that likes to stop tourists to see if they need directions. It's in my nature. I enjoy doing it. Uh, again, I do these free sessions, but if you want to work more closely with me, we meet up two or three times a week. Um, and again, you can speed up your learning curve. Uh, there's nothing worse than spending three, four, five, ten years thrashing around trying to figure it out and reinvent the wheel. Wouldn't it be just easier to plug into a proven system? If you think that I can help you, get in touch. Um, if not, that's cool as well. Um, it, you know What I do is not right for everyone. I'm not naive enough to think that my way is the only way, but if you want a more relaxed approach to trading, let's talk. At the very least, I'll point you off in the right direction. Anyway, my process I refer to as production line trading. Again, I want it for me first. Uh, there's three key areas to what I do. I want a mechanical evaluation. We're actually going to focus on this today, uh, the mechanical assessment, uh, so that we can just literally uh, rank and sort our stocks like we would do in a spreadsheet. We're not going to use a spreadsheet, but nevertheless, similar. Plug into them and say, hey, these are the three stocks I need to look at today. That's what I want to do. And then I can either take action or not, as the case may be, and then go and do something else with my day. Uh, next step would be visually confirm. We'll uh, link those two things together. And then the final step is to look for the entries, the exits, the stops and targets. They're actually all related, uh, but nonetheless, it's mechanical, visual confirmation, and then look for our uh, entries, exits, stops and targets. It's a very simple process. It gets even simpler as I'm uh, developing and having developed a, a strategy, first and foremost, I want to validate does this actually work? You know, I've been doing this a long time. Is it me? Do I bring something to the table that no one else does the way that I view things? Is it that discretion that makes what I do work? Or is it quantifiable? Is it a mechanical rule-based system like I keep saying? Well, let's plug those rules into software and let's just click a button and see if we just mechanically follow those rules, would it make money? Yeah, so we can validate the strategy, mechanically assess which are the right stocks for this style of trading. Then we can go and visually confirm where's the entries, the exits, the stops, the targets. You know, are we expecting to see a trending setup? Then visually confirm it, great. Software is also gonna help you um, with those uh, entries, exits, stops, and targets. You know, it's gonna work them all out for you as well so that we don't have to be flicking through chart after chart after chart. This is a constantly evolving process. And obviously the software is an assistant. It's not a replacement to the human brain. That's the way I like to view it. Uh, but nonetheless, that is what is possible. So again, if you do want to work more closely with me, uh, all my traders get access to the software 
uh, no extra cost. Uh, it's just part and parcel of what I offer. Um, but if you'd like to work with me, you are invited to talk at the very least. And as I promise everyone, if it's not right for you, that's cool as well. I'll always point you in the right direction. Anyway, uh, let's get into the main event. Scanning for stocks. Is there any stocks, uh, while we're on the subject, are there, are there any stocks that you're looking at that you're wondering if you should trade them or not? Pop them in the chat box. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, take them for a test drive through the algo that I just showed you. And we can see, like, is this style of trading good for that stock or is that stock good for swing trading? So pop a, a ticker in the chat box and we'll have a little look at it. So at its most basic, before we do, do, do let me just go to uh, this, let me go to F. So I'm going to use Ford as a, a good example of what I'm looking for. So let me just firstly show you visually. Again, we're going to look at the mechanical step, but so that you understand the mechanical step, I need to show you visually what it looks like so that we can do all that heavy lifting on the left over here. So these two are interrelated, but we need to know what we're looking for first so that we can find it quickly with a scan. So first and foremost, for what I, I basically have six uh, money-making patterns. One of those is trend trading by the dip in the context of a trend. So I want to know what the trend is so that I'm able to buy the trend. Nice and simple, but we've got rules, we've quantified it. And for me, I'm using the 200 period moving average and the 50 period moving average when they cross over and we've been in that trend for about 20 days, then I'm going to start saying things like, okay, we're in at the very least an early stage trend from a mechanical point of view. So that's my mechanical, are we trending? Visually, we can see that we're trending. So we want to kind of tie those two things together. Nonetheless, that's what I'm looking for. Mechanical crossover, mechanical scan. I'm then looking at where price is in relation to those moving averages. Now, for anyone who's had my basics training or been following me for any length of time, I try and... Um, uh, chop the charts up into three phases, phase one, two, and three. So the, the early stage when price goes above the, the 200 period moving average, I can call that a phase one. I don't really trade that much these days. It can be traded, um, but uh, it's not uh, worth it. But what we're looking for is phase twos and threes. Now, three is the one that I'm looking for. So what is a phase three trend? A phase three trend for me is when price is above the 200 and the 50. And we could also put in the 20 period moving average. When it's above all three moving averages, then that's what a phase three trend is. And I'm just circling those times on the charts. Again, we're looking at Ford if you want to follow along. I'm just going to highlight those times where price is above the moving averages, just so that you can see visually. I'm also going to mark off the times where it did go above, but then back below very briefly. So we can see that there and there, and of course, right now. So what we're looking at is the times that price is above all three moving averages and then below the moving averages. So a phase three trend is when price is above all the moving averages. And a phase two trend is basically when price is resting or retracing. So that resting, you can see it's going sideways over there, retracing, it's moving lower, retracing, it's moving lower. So we want to try and capture the transition from a phase two to a phase three. And then we want to lock in profits when it goes from phase three back to phase two. That's where we're going to make money. That's what's making money here, 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 and here. Occasionally, we don't get it going in a straight line. So again, it doesn't work all the time. I'm not going to blow wind in anyone's sales and say it's perfect. But we can visually see that in the last 12 months on Ford, if we just try and capture the times when price is trending or thrusting, another way of describing it, if we can participate in that thrusting or trending move, the phase three trend, then I've got a good chance of making some money. 
if it stops trending and goes from phase three back to phase two, below the move on averages, then I can cash out, close my trade, or keep my losses small. My risk is tiny compared to the opportunity. So let me pause there. Does that make sense? Is everyone happy with the, the high level overarching process that I'm looking for? This is it. So as always, I like to prove it. That sounds great, Phil. It's too bloody simple. Trading's not difficult. We put that, those rules that I've just described, I don't know if you can see on the chart here, but there's little blue arrows, little things. I've got a strategy. That algorithm that I've just said, when it's above all three, go long. When it's below all three, go short. When it's in between the movement averages, close the trade, take profits, keep the risk small. What I can do when my um, graphics card decides not to glitch on me, is I can put that algorithm, those simple concepts, and as you can appreciate, there's a bit more to it on the money management side. Um, many of my insiders know that this has been a constant frustration trying to get it coded up in programs, but at the very least, it validates the principle. If I just did that on a group of stocks, my favorites, uh, again, with a long-term history, a 20-year history, I'm looking for, is this a good strategy? Is this a good idea on this stock? Actually, it looks pretty interesting. If I put it through the S&P futures, does it work on futures? Actually, yeah, it does. It trades historically well over a multi-decade approach. There's multiple crashes, there's multiple corrections, there's multiple economic conditions. What we're essentially doing with this strategy is we're following the money, we're following the footprint of the institutional traders who move and drive and influence the markets. And despite popular belief in the last 12 months with the meme stock phenomenon, which is probably gonna to come to a, uh, pardon pun, crashing halt, it, retail traders don't move the markets on a consistent, regular basis. They can influence them temporarily, as we've seen, but it's not a sustainable business model. So what is sustainable to follow the money, follow the people, to be fair, who are far smarter than me. I don't pretend to be um, you know, a super genius when it comes to economics and maths and fundamentals. I don't want to read company reports. I just want to try and look for the footprint of money and jump on the shirt tails the institutional traders. And that's what I've identified here. I've been trading this or a variation of this strategy pretty much all of my trading career, almost 28 years now. Absolutely. Yeah, it's funny, actually, Randall. Randall's just uh, popping a comment in the chat box. Uh, Wall Street bets is not what it used to be. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much all the people who are uh, popping those meme stocks and ramping the stocks up, um, they disappear. It's something that's going to happen over and over again. What's funny is it's not a new phenomenon. Everyone thinks this is a brand new thing. Go and read Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, um, and you'll hear about the phenomenon of market manipulation. Um, it was written about in 19, 1905, 1908, 1920s. You know, it's not a new thing. A book that was written over 100 years ago you know, it will have this phenomenon. The some of the, the terminology is a little bit different. So when you read Book It Shop um, uh, Broker, then you can kind of change that for something like, I'm going to, it's not entirely accurate, but it's a, basically a market maker broker. You could call it like a ninja, not a ninja trader, um, like a meta trader type broker, um, uh, like a Robin Hood type broker. You know, you could replace that for a Book It Shop type broker in the modern world or a spread better if you're in the UK. Uh, so it does work uh, in a similar way. Uh, it was actually legal back then what they uh, did with market manipulation, but nonetheless, it's written about it. it's not a uh, uncommon thing, or it wasn't an uncommon thing back then. So the legislation has changed, but uh, nonetheless, the, the things that happened then uh, happen now. So anyway, uh, I'm rambling. Uh, the point is, is that what we want to do is we want to have a universe of stocks. This leads on to the next part. We want to have a unit. This is Apple, 20 years. Um, you know, we've got a good historical track record for stocks that have a historical tendency to perform well. And we've already looked at Ford, but nonetheless, let's just go down the list. We're looking for a list of stocks or a group of stocks that have a tendency to perform and behave in a way that is favorable for swing trading. 
So this is what I've spent most of my most of my uh, time doing. At least once a year, I would manually do this. I would go through stocks um, and try and figure out, you know, is this a good group of stocks for my preferred style of trading? It could have been quite, well, it was for many years, for me, quite time intensive. But now, because of, I've got to admit, taking advantage of TradeStation, although I've been using it for, for a long, long time, I'm not a program, not a coder. So I've had a, a little bit of an uphill battle trying to get this codified and quantified, but now it's satisfactorily done. I can validate the rules. I can validate the strategy. And that's what I'm showing you here. So I'm not blowing wind in anyone's sail to say that it's just me and you know what I bring to the table. I can bring the concepts that I've just described, plug them into blue chip stocks, essentially. You know, that's what this um, the massive gainers list here. They're all stocks, they're all recognizable. Uh, they've all got a long multi-decade track record. And it allows me to validate the strategy and the rules that I've literally just described to you on the back of an envelope. So we don't have to overcomplicate this. Does the strategy work? Yes, it does. Now, there's some strategies don't work great on some stocks and vice versa. Some stocks are not great for different styles of trading. Um, there are, I mean, what I want to do is trade uh, swing trading opportunities. I want to get paid in about 30 days uh, and anywhere up to 90 days. So I'm getting paid at the end of the month, uh, uh, for, technically, uh, from my uh, trading ideas. I don't want to be sitting in front of the chart all day, every day. And this is influencing how I approach the markets. So I want to validate the strategy. And then I want to validate a group of stocks. And when I plug this uh, uh, algorithm into the top 2,000 stocks and go through them one at a time. Is this a good stock? Does it have good performance? Is there a historical tendency for it to perform well? If I just go and show you um, a stock that is not necessarily great for my preferred style of trading, I always use Pepsi Cola as an example. It's been great, you know, visually in the last, you know, six months, you know, buy the dip, you know, would have worked great on it. But you can see historically, it doesn't have tendencies to swing well. It's not that it's a bad company. It's not that it's a bad stock, but it's the wrong strategy for the stock. It may be great for a cash flowing strategy, a covered call strategy. It may be great for an investment approach, a dividend stock, because it's a good company. It just doesn't have the big enough swings for the way that I want to trade. Now, if I want to be in front of the computer and be a little bit more proactive, I can use a different combination of moving averages that are pretty common, pretty widely used, and be a little bit more active. But then my payout cycle is shorter and my screen time goes up. So that's the trade-off. It's not that you know, this, this strategy, the principles that I'm using, the buy the dip in a trend, I'm just defining what I want as a trend. I'm defining what I want in life. I want low maintenance, high rewards. That's how I want to trade. It allows me to bugger off like yesterday and go hiking in the hills without worrying about what the stocks are doing. In, in each and every one of your cases, you've got a different reason for maybe a low maintenance strategy. Maybe you want to do things with a family. Maybe you want to go for day, day trips. Maybe you've got a busy day job, but you still want to participate in the markets. This is what I want from trading. And if you want to be more active, again, you can turn that dial and you can speed things up. So if you have got more time and you want the screen time, again, I did that for 12 years then you can go all the way down to day trading should you choose to with the same principles. So hopefully what you should have seen now before we kind of dip into, okay, Phil, how do we scan? I've now got a list of stocks, 89 to be specific. This works on about 300 stocks. It's impractical to trade at 300 stocks. Uh, I want to trade with consistency. I don't know which of these trades is going to work for me uh, on the stocks. So what I want to do is I want to trade with consistency. I want to trade when the trade sets up with the frequency that it sets up so that I can emulate my ex positive expectancy. This is my edge. I don't know if the next trade is going to make me money or the one after, if I'm going to have a string of losses or a string of wins. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. All I know is that historically speaking, I've got a positive expectancy strategy. So I need to trade a small group of stocks with consistency with the frequency that they set up so that I can emulate the performance and hopefully outperform it 
with money management, with how I, with the things that I do bring to the table. But even if I don't do any of the extra discretionary stuff, I should be able to match something similar to what we're seeing here. So that's my logic. That's the premise. That's the hypothesis. And I've got to admit for the last 28 years, that's exactly what we've been doing. But it's only recently that I've been able to validate is this actually something that I bring to the table or is it a systematized rule-based system? It's the latter. It's systematized. It's replicatable. It's repeatable. And if you bring something extra to the table, maybe you're an expert in Dow theory or GAN theory or Elliott wave theory. Maybe you can enhance the strategy with the way that you evaluate the charts. So we're leading with data. And if you want to layer on some discretionary twists, that secret blend of herbs and spices that you bring to the table, because I don't know how you view the charts, then you can layer that on afterwards. But as we've just illustrated, it's not necessary. So it means whether you're a new trader, an intermediate trader, or an old hand experienced trader, we should be able to replicate or emulate something similar. So the next part of this, <clears throat> excuse me, is thinking about the uh, the group of stocks here on the left. So I'm just going to focus my attention on what I consider to be my top 15. Uh, I'm going to start off with them sorted alphabetically. So they're in no particular order other than from A to Z. So this group of stocks here is what I consider to be my accept, my massive gainers. We've just been through the performance. Historically, these are significantly outperforming a buy and hold strategy if I just adopted the principles that I mentioned, which is to trade phase three trends, if I'm trading and just try and capture those times where price is above or below the moving averages. That's what I'm trying to do. So how can I look at even 15 stocks without wasting time, which needs more, or what stocks, which, which opportunities need my attention? So what I'm gonna do, this tool here, all this is doing is show me where it, where are the moving averages? Are they bullish or bearish? And then it's looking at uh, the 200. Where is price in relation to the 200, in relation to the 50, and in relation to the 20 period moving average? You've got the column headers there. If you're watching this live, you can pinch the screen and zoom in and zoom out. I'm going to go back to Ford, which was our example. I'm just going to uh, there we go. Going to zoom out there slightly. Okay, so what I'm looking at is <clears throat> for price to be a buyable dip. So what is a buyable dip? We need the trend, average price crossed over. We want to see price rallying, retracing, rallying, retracing. We can see visually that it's trending. It's great. So this means that we want to buy the dip. Now, we're not going to buy any red day. We're not going to be buying any downward movements. We're going to be bullish when price comes below the 20 or below the 50. Again, it's still not an automatic buying signal. There's no such thing. What we're going to wait for is for price to move back above the 50 or back above the 20. That's But the, the first indication is when it has retraced to a predetermined mechanical point. This is what we refer to as phase two earlier. So when it moves from a phase three, trending phase three back to a phase two resting, it could retrace, it could go sideways, it could continue to sell off. I don't know. But if it continues to move uh, or resume the bullish uh, trend, then when it goes back above the 50 or the 20, depending on how deep it's retraced, then I can use that as my condition to say, now's the time to go long. And we're back in a phase three trend and we want to profit from that. So I'm just showing you visually. So below the 20, below the 50, and as long as it's above the uh, 200. So that's what we're going to look at over here. So <clears throat> if we are in a trending phase three, it's going to be blue, blue, blue. And then the trend is going to be blue as well. That's what we're going to see. So it's above the, the 20, and, uh, sorry, the 50 and the 200 has crossed over. We're above the 200. We're above the 50. We're above the 20. That's what we're looking at over here. So let's do that. So let's sort <clears throat> and rank the stocks. So all I've done, you saw me just click it like a spreadsheet. And I'm just going to put a break in. So now these are all the bullish stocks that have a bullish crossover. That's what this tool is telling me. 
This should be built into most trading platforms. If you want to look for the tool, look for the indicator, look for the scan, it's usually referred to as a golden cross. If you want to look for bearish trades, it's usually referred to as a death cross. Don't roll your eyes. I didn't create the names. <laughs> oh, dude. Whoever thought of these, it's the blame it on the media. Or you can blame it on the boogie. I don't mind, whichever. Uh, but nonetheless, so that's what we're looking for. So, so now these are all the bullish stocks in my little kind of top 15 stocks. Again, I can do this with uh, all 89 stocks. They're going to got a large universe. Uh, but just focusing for simplicity on the, uh, the top 89 stocks. So the next thing I can do is, uh, so if I, uh, bear with me. So what we've just done there, we've ranked all the stocks relative to, are they in a bullish mechanical trend? That's what we've done there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, price needs to be above the 200 period moving average. So that's what I'm going to look for there. Again, I'm just doing the, the, the watch list scan and just corresponding it on the, the chart so that you can see visually what I'm doing. Again, I wouldn't be doing this on the charts because I don't need to, but obviously I'm trying to explain it to you so that you can see like visually what we're looking for and then how we scan for it on the left. And how you can scan for it in uh, TradeStation, you can do it in uh, TradingView, you can build scan, uh, you can do it on, uh, again, many of the online free platforms. Again, obviously this is the platform that I prefer. So now what I'm looking for is where are all the stocks that are above the 200. So that's what we've just done there. So now we've got a smaller group of stocks that are above the 200 period moving average. So now this little universe is getting a little bit smaller. So again, we're just trying to find the, all the stocks that are in those bullish phase three trends. And if, just for speed, I think you'll get the idea. So just for speed, I'm just going to go through it quite quickly. And again, we've got now all the stocks in those 15, top 15 stocks that are in a bullish phase three, they're trending. So now what I can do is say, okay, well, I sh if I'm not in a trend, uh, sorry, if I'm not in a trade, I can start asking myself, why aren't I in a trade? And if you're following me for any length of time, Halliburton, LNG, generally the energy sector, we actually went long on these trades in September, October, and in December uh, last year. So we've got trades on. So again, I know that I'm trying to emulate the, uh, the, the algorithm, the rules, the data says for me to put trades on. And if I'm not in a trade, I can keep a track on my performance very quickly. Do I have trades on these two stocks? Yeah, great. Okay, so I'm following the strategy first and foremost. But these stocks are in a bullish phase three trend. And basically, I just need to wait for the traffic lights, you know, the 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 200 period move on average to turn red. When it goes red, close the trade. So I don't need to look at the charts. Anyway, we'll look, we're scanning for charts. But what I'm, what I'm just taking a little bit of a squirrel moment and a little bit of a detour doing is just finding the stocks that are in a bullish trending phase. Now, equally, we've got uh, one, two, three, four stocks here that are in a bearish phase three trend. So have you got any bearish exposure to the markets? I know I've got uh, a few of these stocks on. I've had bearish trades on. And it means that I don't need to worry about the huge correction that we've seen in the last couple of weeks because I've got bearish exposure, not just because of these four stocks, but you can do the same thing in all of the other, the rest of the stocks that I like to look at. So again, there's only 89 of them. But what we're getting to is, or what maybe you're starting to see, if I've got a mix of bullish trades and a mix of bearish trades, when the market swings up, the bullish trades are going to perform. And when the market swings down, the bearish trades are going to perform. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have surprised, Kevin? All bearish except oil. Yeah, oil's going up. Um, oil's outperforming the market. The sector as a whole is doing really well. So even though the, the collectively the markets is going down, it is putting in a huge corrective movement. The energy sector is actually booking that market trend. Anyway, so this is what we're looking for. So that is allows me a little bit of quality control. So blue, 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 and the direction, bullish. Okay, so great. If I've got trades on those stocks, then I'm doing the right thing. So the next thing is how do we find uh, trading opportunities? 
uh, for example, where's my little color widgets? For example, price needs to be below the 20 or and or below the 50. So the first thing that I can look for is if the 20 period is red. So if the 20 period move on average was red, so I'm looking for red, blue, blue in a bullish trend. So if it's red, 20 period move on average. Now I can see visually that there's, there's no uh, red, blue, blue boxes on the, the kind of the air of the uh, watch list that we're looking at. So it's telling me that all of these stocks in this little segment of my uh, watch lists are putting in deeper retracements because they're all red, red, blue. So I can say that, okay, all of these stocks should look similar to Ford. Price is expected to be in a trend and retracing in the context of a trend, specifically below the 20 and the 50 period move on average. That's pretty cool. I'm going to ignore these because it's red, 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 three reds. So it's telling me there that price is also below the 200 period move on average. So something new is happening at that point. Now it might change, but for the moment, I don't need to worry about that. That is telling me that, you know what, those stocks here, they're not behaving the way that I want. So I don't need to pay any attention to them. They're in technically a phase one trend. Again, I don't trade them. We can do, um, but it's not critical for trend trading or swing trading. So I can ignore those stocks there on that list. So now I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five stocks out of 15. I've not yet looked at any one chart other than Ford so that we can illustrate what, mix and match, you know, spot the difference. Um, this is what it looks like on the charts. And this is what it looks like on the watch list. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five stocks that look like they're dipping in the context of a trend. So again, one more time, I'm looking for red, red, wine, red, red, blue. If you know the uh, song, great. If you don't, it's okay. So red, red, blue, and the direction is blue or bullish. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking for. Uh, don't, don't, don't bear with me. It's the, uh, the 20, 50, 200, and direction is bullish. So this is what a dip in, the, in an uptrend looks like. I can do all of that on the left. I'm a visual trader, so I had this custom coded. Um, it's doing nothing other than saying, where is price in relation to the moving average? Is it above it or below it? Now you can do this, <clears throat> you can do this scan in uh, trading view. If you use an online platform, you can do it in Finviz. Uh, you can quite literally just say, okay, find me golden crosses. Uh, then say uh, price is greater than the 200 period moving average. Price is less than the 50 period moving average and price is less than the 20 period moving average. Go out. Lovely comment from uh, Perry. <clears throat> Got to call that out. Awesome job, dude. Wanted to let you know. My, do you mind if I mention that? Am I okay to say that? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's gone publicly to everyone, so I'm going to presume it's okay. That's awesome result, Perry. Perry's just saying. Perry's just saying. Let me just get the snapshot here. That's awesome. I'm so excited. Just wanted to let you know my account is op with open trades is up 24% presumably based on the capsule being used. Um, even in this bear market, in this huge correction, you're making money. And it's because of these principles, isn't it, Perry? It's being on the right side of the markets. That's awesome job, dude. Well done. Well done. I'm so excited for you. Just put into practice, put into practice these simple concepts. It's not hugely complex what we're doing. Anyway, so how do we scan? So this is the, the thing that means that I don't need to worry about Flicking through chart after chart. Again, we're not looking at a chart yet. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to uh, put bullish phase three. Oops, let's try, let's try typing again. Bear with me. Let's try that again. Oh, my drawing things just stopped. My it's not let me type. Just bear with me. Let's try that again. No, why are you doing it? Come on, dude. Let's try one more time. If we're not, I won't. Uh, what is going on? Let's try that again. Oh, why are some things my computer is? This is one of the sometimes the downsides to using. Um, I'm a Mac user primarily. No, it's not going to work for me. Okay, let's not worry about it. 
do, 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 do. What I was just going to do, uh, I was just going to um, attempt to just label them, just so it was obvious what we're doing. Anyway, um, my <clears throat> just for speed, I won't do it. So the I can add uh, a comment of ones. I'm just going to put these are bullish phase three. These are bullish resting phase two. These are ignore. These are bearish phase three. So all I could do if I wanted to add like a a, a, a header a label row, I could just label them off. So what is next? I've got five stocks. What's going to get me back in the trade? They're above the 200, below the 50, below the 20. So for me, you hear me say it most weeks. I'm looking for price to move above my line in the sand. So if or when, I don't know if it will or when it will, if or when price goes back above the 50 period moving average, I've got that marked off a little above it in fairness, about $21.50. I don't really care whether it's 45 cents, 55 cents, 60 cents. Price at that point will be fact above fact, the 50 period moving average. That for me is going to get me back into a phase three trend. That's what we're trying to capture. Don't know if it's going to work. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. No one has a crystal ball that works. I've ordered many online. They don't. <laughs> but nonetheless, all I know is the data says, you know, if I just keep doing this, if I keep plugging away, buying the dips, selling the rallies, it's going to make me money. Now, when price goes above or back above the 50 period moving average, then this central column here is going to go back from red to blue. So that quite literally is all I need to wait for over here on the left. I can just wait for that central column right there to go from red to blue. When it does that, which will happen at the end of uh, uh, the day, if it happened uh, yesterday, then one of these would be uh, blue. And then I can go and check it today because that's the only stock that I need to look at for tomorrow. Does that make sense? That would be the only stock that I need to look at for tomorrow. Uh, let me just actually put, uh, we've got one that's AAA. Uh, let's try this again. Why won't you do it? Come on. Bear with me. Bear with me. Dum, dum, dum. Why won't you work? There we go. Perfect. So A, A, A. A, A, A. So it's going to look like that. So I just took that stock from uh, down here on one of my other um, subsections of my uh, universe of stocks. But that's what it would look like. So when if that happened yesterday and moved from uh, red, red, blue to red, blue, blue, then that's telling me that price has gone back above that 50 period moving average. Guess what I'm going to do today? I only need to look at AA in, that, in this um, hypothetical example. That's the only chart I need to look at. And more than likely, there's a trade for me to place. Cool. That's all I need to do. So if let's just say that that happens. That was on our, we, we've uh, categorized. And to be fair, while I've got my keyboard working, I can do what I was going to show you. So what I can start to do is say bullish at phase, phase three, phase three bull. Then my phase threes, I can put these as my phase twos. Phase two, phase two resting. So when it, they turn into, if go from phase two to phase three, I can move AA up into that seg segment because that should be a trade that needs to be placed, placed even. These are phase three, phase three ignores. My apologies, not phase three, phase one. Ignore. So everything's below the moving averages. I can ignore those stocks. And these are bears, bearish phase three. So I should have bearish trades on this. So now I can start to categorize and keep track of oh, phase three bear. There we go. So I can start to keep track of a very small list of stocks without ever looking at the charts. 
and do all the heavy lifting and the scanning and the filtering. And again, it takes longer to explain than to do. But now that this is done, all I need to do is update and move AA from resting phase two into, you know what, maybe I need to put a trade on. Maybe I need to go and put that trade on. Now I can look at the chart. Let's take a look at the chart. Let's see if there's anything for us to do. So now we can see that there is a, a trade potential on AA. Now that we're looking at this, uh, in fairness, now that we're looking at this, we've got buy the dips, we've got candidates. It's actually done it the other way around. So done it the other way around. It's gone from above the 20 period moving average back below the period moving average. So if we weren't already in a trade, and you can see it's come down to the 20, it's gone back above. Um, but if we weren't already in a trade, then I can certainly look for a new one. When it goes back above $60, I can consider a new trade entry. So if it wasn't already in a trade, this is now going to firmly be on the, you know what, you should probably put a trade on this list. And now I'm looking at it. It's right next to the um, uh, 20 period moving average. So when that turns from uh, red, blue, blue back to uh, blue, 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 then I know it's above and back in a, a phase three trend. And again, if I wasn't already in a trade, then I can certainly start to think about placing a new trade and keep an eye on it from there onwards. And this again just means that by you know ranking and sorting the stocks and the, the uh, trade choices and opportunities like this, it means that I don't need to stress over what to trade, how to select stocks. Is this a good stock? I've already predetermined my 89 stocks. There, I'm only looking at 89 stocks. If you want a copy of that list, send me a message. I'm happy to give you the benefit of my research. That's going to jumpstart your uh, trading choice, this swing trading career. That's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, best way to get in touch with me, the fastest way to get in touch with me is come and join the Slack group. This is my little uh, corner of the internet, uh, HTTPS forward slash antivestor.com forward slash. I'm just popping it in the um, uh, forward slash Slack. There we go. So you've got a, uh, a link there, antivestor.com forward slash Slack. Uh, that'll take you, it's a little bit of software. It's a third party software. It's just nice and easy to use. Uh, you can just click on my name, uh, Phil Newton, and it will send me a direct message. I'm happy to give you my universe of stocks. Uh, the replay will also be um, uh, posted up here. So any replays, any past uh, sessions there, any market videos or analysis. Um, it was my birthday. Uh, it's my birthday this weekend, actually. Uh, so I'm just posting a little bit of uh, um, love from that. And again, if you want to uh, be involved in the community, you can see uh, Kevin there. Awesome dude. Oil position. 60% return on capital. Well done. Well done indeed. Um, but nonetheless, if you want to join me, if you want to copy that list, just click on my name, join Slack group and send me a message. If you don't want another app on your phone, that's cool as well. Uh, just send me an email, hit reply on any of the emails and just ask me for the stock list. I'll send you a text file over. The idea being is that it just jumpstarts like which stocks to trade. These for me, just to um, remind you, the stocks in this universe are the best stocks as per the algorithm uh, that I use that if I just traded a phase three trend, will it make money? Yes. And it'll consistently make money over a 20 year period. So that's how this universe is being created. I've actually run it through three strategies. Um, I've got three algorithms, which I uh, use to uh, test check and monitor. Do I have a, robust universe of stocks. This is my watch list. Uh, I don't trade anything else. I don't care about the meme stocks. I don't care about dividend payments. I don't care about who, you know, which executive. I don't care about insider buying or all the other bullshit that goes on. All I want to know is, do, does this stock price movement behave in a favorable way. That's all I want. So that's how this universe of stocks is created. Now what we've done is with that universe of stocks is say, okay, well, these stocks are in that bullish phase three. We know historically from the data's point of view, I should be in these trades. We know that this one with the, uh, again, just using the traffic light system, the, the red, blue, blue, this is now a dip, small dip in the context of a trend. More specifically, it's a viable dip in the context of a trend. And these, these uh, other phase twos, these are also dips in the context of a trend. Specifically, they are viable dips in the context of a trend, just like Ford 
We can see it on the screen here. It's below the 20, below the 50. Visually, it's in a very clear trending chart. It starts at the bottom left, finishes at the top right. Um, it's not just any dip. It's a Bible dip. If and when that turns around, we've already established it, I'm going to promote it from resting phase two into like this is an open trade. This is an open trade. I'm gonna hopefully going to see it go from uh, red, red, blue to blue, 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 and be making me money. Again, Apple is the same thing. It's a buyable dip. We spoke about this two weeks ago now. Um, as it went below the 50 period moving average, I'm looking for a move above 71 uh, sorry, $171 and about 10 cents. I don't care about the eight. If it's above $171, I'm going to go long on it. I don't care about the pennies. Uh, all I know is that if I do that, it's going to make me some money, potentially. I don't know what's going to happen next week, next month, this year. All I know is that the data supports that, you know what, all I'm trying to figure out is, should I place this trade and can I profit in the next 30 days? Yes, there's a positive expectancy strategy. There's a high expectation of a positive outcome. That's all I'm looking for. That's what an edge looks like. Um, if you try and do this on stocks that aren't swinging, that don't offer those opportunities, like a Pepsi Cola, it's not that it's a bad stock. It's just that it's the wrong strategy for the stock. We do this all the time in the real world. And this may be a good place to draw a line under it. So that we do this all the time in the real world. If you're opening a uh, bricks and mortar business on the high street, the main street, whatever it is, you're going to pick a speciality. Uh, it could be uh, a trade. It could be that your uh, 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 a footwear store. It could be that your clothing store. It could be that you're a DIY store. I don't know what your fancy is, but you've got a speciality. We're going to call that a strategy instead because we're on the stock market. We're going to focus on swing trading stocks that gets us paid around about the end of the month in about 30 to 45 days. That's my style of trading. That would be like me saying, you know what? I'm going to um, open a clothing store. I'm going to focus on uh, women between uh, 35 and 45 is going to be my speciality. And I'm going to focus on a uh, fashion that is interesting for that age range. That's a strategy, you know, that you, you have, you know, I want to trade the stock market. I want to be in women's fashion. Let's take it one step further. I want to be in the stock market and profit from swing trading stocks that gets me paid at the end of a 30 day uh, swing cycle. I want to open a fashion store that focuses on women between the ages of 35 or that have a, 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 an affinity for clothing that is uh, suitable for 35 to 45 year old women, blah, blah, blah. You see where we're going with this. We do things in exactly the same way in the real world and don't give it a second thought. But for some reason, as soon as we move into the stock market, people just think we can buy a lottery tickets and have it work. So all we've done is we've taken same principles that we use in every other facet of our lives and apply it to the stock markets. I need a strategy that makes sense, that suits my personal preference, uh, that works around my lifestyle, the life that I want to live, and still gets me paid. That's what I'm looking for. So that's what I'm trying to do. Then I'm going to go into, okay, how do I accomplish that goal, that life goal? How do I accomplish that with a strategy that makes sense? I'm going to profit from swing trading stocks with an average payout of around 25 to 30 days. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but about 30 days. I'm going to look for a group of stocks that has a historical tendency to behave in a way. And that would be like me saying, I'm going to target women between 35 and 45 for my fashion business. Well, I'm going to target a group of stocks, 89 stocks that have a historical tendency to behave in a way that is favorable for swing trading stocks. We've married those two things together. And that means that we have a positive expectancy strategy. And with that universe of stocks, I can smartly sort and rank the stocks relative to their phase of movements. Is this a buying phase? Should I be in these trades? Are they in a resting phase? And should I be paying attention to them for a new opportunity? Are they doing something that doesn't make sense? And can I ignore them? Great. Are there a list of stocks that are in a bearish phase in the same way? 
that allows me to have a natural portfolio hedge for when the market swings lower, like we're seeing right now. So while these stocks are retracing, being closed for profits, maybe some of them are hitting stop losses, there's going to be a segment of your portfolio because it's naturally balanced that have bearish exposure. And that's when these stocks are going to accelerate because the market's retracing, it's correcting, maybe it's crashing. And that's going to give you um, some confidence to sleep through and go hiking like I did yesterday and not worry about what the market is doing. Because you have a strategy that is robust, you're adopting a portfolio approach with at least a 15 stock universe would make sense. It's not going to be overwhelming, especially if you're brand new, especially while you're learning a strategy. Um, but it just gives you that exposure to the markets that allows you to profit from swings naturally without being overwhelmed and certainly um, not be spending more specifically every day, all day wondering, is this the right stock? Is this the right stock? The other mistake and trap that you can easily fall into is now that you're looking at this chart, we're looking at Apple, for example. Now you're looking at this chart. What a lot of newer traders will tend to do is then ask the question, how do I trade this chart? I don't need to worry about that. We figured that out before we even looked at the charts. I'm looking for a phase three trend. Great. Is this a stock that historically has a trending tendency? Yes. Great. Is it above or below its moving averages? It's below. Leave it alone. I don't need to worry about how to trade this chart. And that's what most traders do. Most novice traders, you see it online, you see them on the internet, you see them on forums. I'm looking at this stock. Should I trade it? How do I trade it? What should I? And they, you, will, you can easily spend two, three, four hours looking at one chart, continually asking, should I trade this? How do I trade this? And if you do trade it, did I do the right thing? All that mind chatter is toxic. By approaching the markets with a business-like approach, using all the principles that we already commonly accept in the real world, apply those tenets to the stock markets, it gives us a, a high expectation that we're going to succeed in the long term. I don't know which trade's going to work out. I'm not going to pretend to say that I know any, any more than you do. What I do know is the data suggests trade these 50, trade these 89 stocks with consistency, with impunity, consistently, and on average, like any other business, we should do well. That's all I've got to say, folks. That's all I've got to say on the subject. Right, uh, where are we at? So we've looked at uh, scanning stocks like a pro. Excellent. Now then, uh, do, 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 uh, do, where are we? Right. What's your biggest takeaway? Do you enjoy the session? These are just some comments from last week. Have you got any questions, comments, observations? Um, if you want to look at anything, I don't think anyone's posted a stock for me to uh, look at. I don't see anyone posting the tickers. Uh, again, Perry, well done. Just want to give you a little bit of a callback. Well done, my friend. Uh, account is up. Despite the market being down, his account is up. That's all that matters. That's what happens when you have a positive expectancy strategy. So again, once again, well done. Um, a question from Rodrigo. Do, 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 do. Let me just take a little snap. Question from Rodrigo. Oh, so do I wait till the end of the day? Generally, yes, I do. Um, wait, till the wait till the end of the... Uh, so uh, let's go through an example. So the, th the thing that you need to keep in mind, let's just, we're looking at Apple uh, just for reference. So I'm looking at when or, when or if price goes back above $171, when it goes above that level, I'm going to go long. I'm going to do that whenever I see it. If it's intra, it's going to be probably intraday at some points. There's no set time. And um, if that happened yesterday, I was up the side of a mountain. I would place the trade today. It doesn't matter is what I'm trying to get to from the point of view of it's just such a small factor that's not important. So don't stress over the entry in the way that most people do. A couple of examples. In fact, let's go back to, let's just look at all the, all the times that, uh, in fact, let's use Ford because we were using that as our illustration. Let's go back to Ford. 
So if we look at Ford, I've just put this full screen, uh, price, uh, the first condition is met there. You've got multiple days. You've got about five days there when price is just flirting with a very small buyable dip, the 20 period move on average. Price rallies, it retraces, and then goes back above. You've got about three days that it just meandered sideways, but you had 20 days to keep it on your maybe today's the day, maybe today's the day list. You know, it retraced below the 20 period move on average all the way down to the 50. It was in a buyable dip, BD, a buyable dip for 20 days. And then you had about three days to place the trade. Rally, 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 targets reached, retracement below the 50 period move on average for what do you reckon? Three months? Three months. So that was on your maybe, maybe list, Bible dip for three months. Then it goes, we've got rules for all of this. So then it goes back above the 50 period move on average. And I don't know if you can quite see that because I've drawn over it. You've got about three days to get in the trade. You don't need to worry about stressing in a major way and watching it like a hawk. If it goes above and hits the trigger levels that I teach all my students, put the trade on. Put the trade on when you see it. Don't worry about the, oh, it's one penny past the trigger level. It's one penny above the moving average. What, what it, it's not, don't stress over it. Don't sweat the little stuff. Price retraces. It's about three months under the moving averages. It's going to be three months on your Bible dip list. Plenty of time to keep an eye on it. Is today the day? No. Is today the day? No. So for three months, is today the day? No. Is today the day? No. Is today the day? No. Is today the day? Yes. And then it retraced a bit. You had, you know, maybe five, seven, eight days to do something. It then rested there. It rallied, paused a little bit. So maybe you've got two weeks to get a trade on. See so what I mean? You don't have to stress over the uh, micromanaging the entry. You don't need to micromanage the entry. There's often several days to get positioned on a trade that makes sense, like over here. Uh, price uh, goes sideways and then catches up with the 20 period move on average there. So it goes below, goes back above, and then what, three weeks, three weeks going sideways before it eventually started to pop higher. So you've always got plenty of time is what I'm trying to illustrate, Rodrigo. Does that make sense? You've always got time. It's very rare that price is going to trigger Again, the way that I teach all my students is that when it triggers uh, with a predetermined entry level, we've always got plenty of time to get on board, whether it's immediately intraday as it penetrates that trigger level or maybe the following day, because some people are doing this at the end of the day. So you can do it at the end of the day and make your decisions at end of day. If you're a little bit, you know, if your schedule is a little bit um, uh, less flexible than others. But does that, does that resonate? Does that make sense, Rodrigo? Again, we don't need to micromanage the entry. And similarly, we don't need to micromanage the entry. The, the swing trading, we've usually got plenty of time to take action. We've always got plenty of time waiting to actually place the trade. In this case, you can see we've got anywhere from several days to several weeks when price is in that viable dip mode, the resting phase two. There's always plenty of time for us to monitor it. And then just whenever you see it go into a phase three trend, that's the time we want to take action. If you see it intraday as it happens, cool. If you see it two or three days later, that's cool as well. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't stress the entry. Don't micromanage the entry. Uh, and do the, uh, let's come back. So there's part two to the question. Bear with me a second. Let me just get that on the, uh, the scoreboard for everyone else. Uh, thank, feel free to uh, post a question. Thank you, as always, for spending a little bit of extra time with us. We are running over, but I want to make sure everyone's questions are asked and answered. So follow on question. Uh, do the move and averages need to be stacked in order, like 20 over the 50, 50 over the 200? Uh, the 50 and the 200, yes. The 20 can be below the 50. If the 20 is below the 50, I will ignore it. But yes, in a perfect world, you all three of them stacked on top of each other would be quite nice. And uh, thank you for your, uh, I'm glad that, that previous answer made sense. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, any, uh, any words, any words of wisdom, any uh, final thoughts? Again, I'm just looking at the launch list. Thank you, everyone. We've got a full house, as it turned out. Thank you for staying to the end. We've got uh, Adrian, Bal, Glenn, Ian, Johns, Kevin, 
Mr. Multiple Underscore has either changed his name or left. <laughs> Guess he didn't want to be uh, here. Or if you are here, uh, let me know. Uh, Mark, Perry, Peter, Randall, Rodrigo, obviously, Ruben, Steve, Scott, Vito. Hello, Vito. Uh, YB, Zach, and Zeke. Zach and Zeke. You could be brothers. <laughs> All the Z's. Be patient. Absolutely, Kevin. Be patient. That is the hardest part about what we do, isn't it, Kevin? Um, it's a lesson. It's, I think it's one of those lessons that um, it's an ongoing lesson that we learn and relearn uh, because it's human nature to be impatient. We always want it now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it, you're absolutely right, Kevin. Kevin's just saying he keeps learning. It's a lesson I keep learning. Um, and I have to constantly remind myself to be patient and wait for the opportunities. It, it, it's such a... I think I said this last week. I know I said it in our private sessions, Kevin. Um, the it, It's such a weird thing that we, as traders, we get paid to wait. We wait for opportunities, wait for setups, wait. The actual activity of trading is minimal. And what I'm always trying to achieve is it's just, if I'm stat staring at the charts like a zombie, it's the thing I hate the most. It's just unproductive time. It's just completely not necessary to stare at the charts. If my trade's not at target, if it's not near my stop loss, if it's not near my management points, which are all predetermined rules for me, then there's nothing for me to do. There is no, no need for me to be at the computer and do something else. <laughs> the caveat to that is uh, if you are genuinely day trading, and even then, you only need to be close to take action. Uh, but nonetheless, it's uh, the same principle. Uh, interesting comment from Zeke. There we go. Overtrading, yeah. Overtrading. It's, um, it can be a killer it, for, for most. I mean, the way that it's portrayed on TV, the way that it's portrayed in the media is that trading with any time horizon, it's all pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Pew, 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 lots of buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. And certainly if you were trading in the pits back in the 80s and 90s before they closed down, um, you would see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of activity. And that was the way that it was done then. But still the reality is, is that it, it's very easy these days to click the mouse and put a trade and put a trade and put a trade and put a trade. And then suddenly your account's just disappeared. In fact, I haven't got a slide here. Here's what happens when... Uh, where there is it? I think I've got one somewhere. You you've only got to go into Wall Street Bets and just type. Um, I think you can actually. Uh, I think the tag is Lost Pawn. I why people are proud of this? I have no fucking idea. People are so proud. When I say people, I'm not including you. All you lovely guys and girls, you know, you're smarter traders than these guys love me. This is what happens when you make it up as you go along. This is what happens when you constantly ask, where's the trade? Should I be in the trade? And these are like quite literally life-changing losses. I'll have to update this. You can go into Wall Street Bets and just type in loss, loss pawn. They'll tag their own losses. And they're proud of the fact that they literally shit the bed. Um, it's Excuse my, excuse my Klingon. Um, it's just, I just don't understand it. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> It's just a ridiculous thing to be proud of. Oh, yeah, I, I, I bought uh, $100,000 worth of lottery tickets and, um, and none of them paid me. Why is that, why is that an achievement? It's just oh, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, uh, it, it frustrates me just because I, I, I don't think that way. I just can't think that way. Anyway. Enough of my uh, frustrations. I've lost where I'm in the slides. There we go. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, for all your kind comments and being interactive. Um, yeah, absolutely, Randall. Do the groundwork. Um, overthinking, do the groundwork. Yeah, that's the that's really what it comes down to. And you don't have to. I, I'm pretty convinced you don't have to do hours and hours and hours of research. We're not doing. Uh, certainly, I'm not doing fundamental analysis. But all the heavy lifting has been done. Years and years in the making, years in development. You know, which stocks I trade is this a good strategy for me, my lifestyle, the things that I want to achieve. Um, so yeah, we don't necessarily have to overthink it. Anyway, I think that's it. We've come to a natural conclusion. Glenn, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your kind words. Uh, as always, I'd like to uh, offer my appreciation to each and every one of you. 
Um, we could be doing something else with our time. Certainly, you could be just doing something else with our time. I just want to thank you for deciding to spend it with me. I say it every week. Uh, it's genuine. It's true. It's heartfelt. And uh, I wouldn't be doing these sessions if you didn't keep turning up. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for spending it with me, making it fun and interactive. The questions do help uh, and interactive. So thank you again for that. If you got any value from this, if you're watching this on the recording, if you could share the recording, share it with one or two people that might need to hear this uh, session that might be useful for them to help them on their trading journey. The way that we're all going to grow as traders is if we help uh, the people who are just a step behind us, help them on to the next step up. Help them on to the next step up. Uh, and the only thing I would ask you to do, the price of admission for today's session is that you take action. You put it into practice. And there's nothing worse than just hearing something that makes sense and understanding something conceptually, which you all do, and then not taking action on it. And so that's all I would ask you to do. put into practice and uh, what you've learned. If you've got questions, send me a message. And as I promised you earlier, uh, there is always an invitation to work. And if you'd like to speed up your learning curve. Um, you're invited to work with me uh, because the, the bottom line is that this actually works. It gets results. I've proven that multiple times today. And if you want to start getting real results in your trading, you can start now. Uh, you can skip the 5, 10, or if, for some people, they've been at it for 20 years. And it's a very painful DIY learning curve. Why don't you just skip the line and I'll show you what I do in exact detail so that you can replicate my results plug into a tried and tested trading system. I've been using this system or a variation of it for over 20 years now, 28 years I've been at this full time. Uh, it's 2001. There, there was no space odyssey involved back then, but nonetheless, plug into a proven system. I work exclusively with a small group of traders in 90 day sprints to basically emulate what I'm doing so that you can see in real time what I'm doing as I'm doing it, as it's happening, and also help you navigate uh, some of the tricky market conditions like we've seen over the last uh, uh, seven to 10 days. It can be a little bit scary when you're sitting through a retracement, a correction. How do we manage the portfolio? It should take care of itself. What if we've not got a balanced portfolio? All those things that we need to take into consideration, they're all relative and relevant to your unique situation. But I will personally show you how I find and execute profitable swing trades. Um, I'll show you my uh, the other five money-making blueprints. We've looked at one of them today. Uh, there's actually six money-making blueprints that I use to make money. And you get access to my custom coded software with the exact trades that I'm personally making each and every day. We've had a little look at it already, but it looks a little something like that. Uh, but nonetheless, effectively, you're looking over my shoulder and seeing what I'm doing as I'm doing it with the assistance of the charting software, with the precise entries, exit stops, and targets along the way, rather than just a very generalized version, which is what we do on this uh, free Friday open house, uh, so that you can actually learn in the fastest and smartest possible way. So if you'd like to join that, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Uh, all you need to do is go to my website, antivesta.com, or if you're driving and watching this on a replay, go to productionlinetrading.com. It will redirect you there. Um, you can go to antivesta.com, which is my uh, main med website. Productionlinetrading.com will redirect you there. Again, just a memorable link if you are driving and can't take notes. Uh, and again, I will quite literally show you my uh, production line trading system. Uh, so with that said, that's my uh, un unabashed invitation to work with me. If you want to, great. If you don't, that's cool as well. If you want to talk uh, to see if what I do is right for you, send me a message. I'm always happy to talk to a trader who's not sure. At the very least, I will point you off in the right direction. You just let me know what you're looking for. If, if what I do is not right for you, I'm cool with that. Um, but at least you'll be able to ask the next person that you're looking uh, at working with uh, if it's the right thing for you. You'll be able to ask more smart and more informed decisions, more informed questions so that you can find what you're looking for in your trading. And I think with that said, let's um, land the plane. Let's dock the boats. Let's charge the Tesla. Um, let's call it a session. Thank you once again, each and every one of you for spending some time with me. This was scanning for stocks like a pro. Um, I truly hope that you got some value out of today's session. Um, the replay will be available shortly. And with that said, let's do it. Thank you again. I'll speak to you all very, very soon at the same time, same place and next Friday.